Welcome to the coolest stuff on the planet. Hi everyone and welcome to the coolest stuff on the planet. I'm Catherine. And I'm Sarah. And today's podcast was suggested by a listener in the UK named Justine. And she suggested that we visit this uh, place called Chichen Itza in Mexico. Getting into spring break time and oh, yeah. Cancun, Mexico is still a huge destination for spring breakers. And mm-hmm. Chichen Itza is only about a 90 minute drive away. So it's a huge draw for day trips for all those people that are vacationing in Cancun. Sure. And Chichen Itza is a very popular Mayan ruin. It's Mm -hmm. actually one of the most popular uh, ruins in Mexico. And it was recently added to the new Seven Wonders of the World in Mm. 2007. Yeah, this site is just full of huge pyramids, temples, even sports fields. And they're all organized around this uh, symbolism of the cosmos. So uh, the Mayans are really into astronomy, and that's really reflected in what you see there. So, for instance, the stairs that uh, lead to the main El Castillo Pyramid, there's 365 steps, which, of course, is... Go with the number of days in in the the year. year. Right, one solar year. Yep, and uh, just like you mentioned, the El Castillo Pyramid, just beyond that... There's a large ball court, mm-hmm. and actually that's where the Maya men used to play a game called Pock to Pock. Yeah. Not anything like football or soccer, <laughs> because the object of the game was to hurl a ball through a ring that was attached to a wall, and this was about 23 feet off the ground. Basketball. Sort of like <laughs> basketball, uh-huh. except the captain of the team that made the first successful shot was decapitated. Huh. And this was as, as a sacrifice to the gods. But this was actually seen as an honor, and this person was then guaranteed an entrance into heaven. You know, there are also some carvings that show the loser as being sacrificed as well. So You couldn't win for winning. <laughs> you couldn't win for winning. <laughs> yeah. Either way, either you win or you lose, you're a loser. Yeah, you know? so. I wonder who, who was, uh, how they, they recruit people to play this game. I don't know, but I guess the loser, maybe they didn't get an honor, or they didn't get a guarantee into heaven. I, that's the only difference I could maybe see. Yeah, and uh, this site was there for hundreds of years, but for some reason it was abandoned in the 1400s, and no one really knows why. But there's a Mayan prophecy that on December 22nd, 2012, the great warrior serpent is going to rise from this ball court, grown and destroy the world. And, of course, we've been hearing a lot mm-hmm. about that. So. Yeah. And um, so with all this in mind, we're going to talk about a few things to consider if you're visiting Chichen Itza. And would the first tip be to get there before December 22nd, 2012? You do want to get there before 8 a.m. If, if you want to get there before any time. Because mm-hmm. 8 a.m. is usually when tour buses from Cancun show yeah, up. Yeah. And those would include, you know, tourists that are visiting Cancun, also tourists from the local cruise ships that dock in Cancun. It gets extremely crowded. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah. And also you want to try to avoid the heat in the middle of the day if at all possible because it gets yeah. extremely hot. Justine told us mm-hmm. that um, when she was there, she was visiting in the middle of October, and it was still it was in the middle of the day. About like 93 degrees. So yeah, it was so really hot. hot. Uh-huh. If she ever went again, she might even stay overnight in mm-hmm. Chichen Itza because there's so much to see, and she felt like the, her day trip from Cancun didn't give her enough time to see everything she wanted to. Exactly. So those were a few suggestions she gave us. So other super crowded times are the spring equinox and the autumn equinox because that's when the sun casts a shadow that looks like a serpent going up the steps of El Castillo. And um, I've been told that it's really crowded then. Tens yeah, I think of I read about 10,000 people a day are there during that time. Exactly. So very crowded. It's very crowded. But I'm told if you go the week before these events, it's actually the illusion's almost as good and you will avoid the crowds. Yeah. So that's something you want to keep in mind. And Justine also told us that one of the things that most amazed her is if you stand in front of the pyramid's main staircase and Mm -hmm. clap your hands, you get an echo that sounds similar to the Quetzal bird, which was very revered by the Mayans. And this is actually caused by the acoustics from the step. Yeah, they designed it so that you have a low step with a high rise, and that just makes the acoustics really bounce and strangely give that, that sound of that bird. Yeah, and apparently the, the Mayans really considered the emerald green feathers from the tail of mm-hmm. the Quetzal bird more valuable than gold. Wow. So that wraps up our visit to Chichen Itza. We'll have more information on our blog, and you can also check us out on Facebook and Twitter. And all those details will be at the end of our podcast. And we'll see you next time on The Coolest Stuff on the Planet. For more on this and thousands of other topics, visit HowStuffWorks.com. Don't forget to check out our other podcasts free on iTunes.